Yo, Elliot, I'm 22. I have a lot going on that's going well for me in my life. Uh, a job I've always wanted and worked for years to get set up with uh, when I graduate this May, making great money. And I'm also newly married. So you got a great job, you're graduating, you're getting married. He says, however, I really want to build a profitable non-job business to supplement my income and give me options as I head into full-time work. With all the uncertainty ahead, I find myself putting increased amounts of pressure to get success now in my business. And I'm struggling with all the other chatter out there that says, do this to earn $10,000 a month. And the, it's so simple to earn $20,000 a month. Just do this, causing me to doubt my path because success hasn't come. My question is, do you have any tips for a young guy like me as to how I can eliminate the noise, the troll goals of other people, particularly online, and discern what is the right action for me? I know where I want to be with my goals. Should I be purely focused on developing the skills needed to get there and less focused on getting the success right now? So I want to backtrack for a moment and just show you where you may be missing the boat a little bit. You say, um, I have a lot going well for me in my life. You said, a job I've always wanted and worked for for years to get set up. And when I graduate this May, I'll be making great money. At 22, remember, you're, you're finishing up. You're, and I didn't even say finishing up. You're reaping the harvest of all you've sown for the past uh, 10 years. The past 10 years, you have, as you say, I've always wanted. I've worked for years. And now in May, I'm going to get this great job making money. But you forgot that that's where you're headed. And now you're trying to add more stuff to it. You're, you're trying to, you're trying to uh, how can I say this? You haven't even received the gift yet and you're already, you're already rejecting it and wanting more. You haven't even gotten what you worked so hard for yet and you're already disregarding it and wanting something else, something new. It's not good enough for you. And this, my friend, is where you will run yourself ragged in life because time after time, you're going to put yourself uh, to work. You're going you're gonna to grind. You're going to go and you're building towards something. And right before the finish line, I've done this and I see it happening all the time. Right before you're about to get what you want, Whoa, you pull back the reins. You've been sprinting. You've been going. You're on your grind. You know what you want. You're about to get it and you're going, hold up. Maybe I need to go do this. I need to build this. I need to distract myself from everything except receiving what I'm supposed to get. Bro, you're receiving what you've worked so hard for. There should be no anxiety. There should be no worries. You say you're also making great money. Rest in the assurance that you're being gifted what you've called for. Receive this gift, bro. Receive this gift and care for it with the responsibility of a father. You're a newly married man. You're a husband. Receive this job. Receive this job, love this job, dominate this job, make great money in this job, and forget about the non-job. And I know that sounds crazy, right? Because everybody's telling you, do this and make $10,000 a month. Do this simple thing and you make $20,000 a month, right? Even I tell you that, right? Get into this program and if you're a non-jobber, I say, hey, make it your goal to earn $10,000 a month with your non-job if you're a non-jobber. You are not a non-jobber. You're somebody who's being handed a gift and is turning your nose up at it so you can go do something that you're not. You're not a non-jobber. Sorry, you could become one. You can build that up later, but right now you need to finish graduating. You need to focus on that job, put your eggs in that basket, do a great job in your new career, gratefully and graciously receive your paycheck, you say you'll be making good money and live that life for a while. Live that life for a while. Appreciate that life for a while. Don't spread yourself thin. You're already having anxiety spreading yourself thin with just thinking that you need to go do this entrepreneurship thing. And listen, like I said before, it doesn't mean that you'll never have a non-job. 
by mere virtue of you having a desire for it may be a premonition that it's that it's on its way in your life, but it's not the season for it yet. You know how many times I have known that I wanted something, but it wasn't the right season for it yet? Like this, like the ranch that I'm on right now. I wanted to live on acreages in rural Pennsylvania. That's really what I wanted when I was 22 years old. That's what I wanted to do when I was 22 years old. I wanted to go live and I wanted to homestead and homeschool my kids. Bro, I went 20 years before that happened. And I look at my life now and I'm like, this is what I wanted all along. But you know what? I had to live in a townhouse. I had to go into bankruptcy. I had to rent houses for years. I had to buy a house in the suburbs. I had to send my kids to school. I did all that for 20 years, knowing it deep in my heart. This is not it. This is not it. This is not it. Guess what happened? 2020, COVID hit. Boom, we picked up. We moved, took my kids out of school, homeschooling, homesteading. My daughter just sent me a text message today saying, Dad, thank you so much for allowing us to homeschool. My daughter is in her glory. And she's one of my daughters that's not the easiest one to deal with. Right? But she knows the value of, of what I've been able to provide for her after all these years. She's almost 17. She's 17 years old, almost 20 years old. I wish I could have given this to her earlier. I wish I could have. I wanted to. But it wasn't the right season. It wasn't the right time. Things need to line up. It may be 20 years from now until you start to build your non-job. I'm not saying it is, but what you got to recognize is that there's a season for that. There's a season for that, and it may be sooner rather than later, but it's going to show itself to you. It may be later rather than sooner, but it's going to show itself to you. It's going to present itself to you. It's going to fall in your lap like this uh, uh, ranch fell in my lap. It literally fell in my lap. This, this, I, this was grace of God completely. For everything to have happened the way it did for me to be where I am right now. And that's just one example of in my life. I have so many examples like that in your life. And your life will work out the same way. But don't get ahead of yourself. Don't get ahead of yourself. Focus on your wife. Focus on your work. Focus on your family. Focus on your home. Focus on what you're dealing with right now. Don't get ahead of yourself. So he says, my question is, do you have any tips for a young guy like me? How could I eliminate the noise, troll goals of other people online and discern the right action for me? The, the, the way to discern the right action for you is very simple. It's very simple to discern the right action for you in this circumstance. Open your eyes to what is and let alone what isn't. Get out of your imagination. We live and we, we've been taught and we are trained to live in our imagination in this world. Men need to get out of their imaginations. We're high flyers, according to Robert Bly and Iron John. He says that we're, we're a high flying generation, which means nothing is good enough for us on the ground. We can't get our hands dirty. We can't get, get, just get busy doing real work. We got to fly away with some highfalutin daydream about what life is supposed to be and then a lot of guys end up living their lives in a limbo guys live their lives in limbo what does limbo look like these guys who suck at the work that they're doing but yet have high hopes and dreams and live in this in-between world where they're not getting what they what they're not getting out because they're not putting in to the work that they have in front of them so you're not bearing any fruit and you're miserable because you're because you're not loving what you have and being appreciative, and pie in the sky, high hopes and dreams, which will never manifest themselves if you can't take care of what you got in front of you. God will. I will tell you this. I know that God didn't give me this acreage. He didn't give me this ranch when I was 22 because I couldn't take care of it. I was mentally, physically, emotionally, financially unprepared. I couldn't. It would be useless on me. It would be a burden on me if God would have given me what I wanted when I wanted it. There's a time when you're going to be ready for certain things. And you got you to do what you got to do right in front of you so that you could be ready to receive that $20,000 a month. You, can, you don't have $20,000 a month right now because you're not ready to receive it. You wouldn't know what to do with it. I remember, too, wondering, like, you know, how come I didn't have more money when I was younger? And how come I didn't come? There were a couple of things I used to like lament about like when I was young. And then I grew up and I realized, oh man, good thing God didn't give that to me. Good thing God didn't give that to me. Knowing my ego, knowing the way I am, 
knowing my fallen nature, if God would have given me riches and fame earlier, I know I would have ended up in a far worse circumstance. I would have made all kinds of mistakes. I know myself. I know myself. I would have made all kinds of bad mistakes, right? I'm prideful. If I was making all that money and doing all that stuff at age 22, <laughs> I would have thrown it away because I wasn't mature enough to handle it. You might not be mature enough yet to handle it. So you, God is working on your character too. God is saying, okay, all right, you want $20,000 a month? Well, you got to learn how to be detached, be disciplined, be committed, be hardworking, be industrious, be flexible. Right? All the things that you might learn in your job, think about your job as a, as a, as a, as a stepping stone. I don't want to think of it as a stepping stone. Think of it as an internship to a, to a, to a, a new part of your life. You're going to learn every, a lot by working in this company that you might be able to take and build your $20,000 a month business. The very job you're taking may be the, may be the gateway to your $20,000 a month, but you got to do what you got to do that's right in front of you now. Forget the non-job. That's my opinion. As long as you're making enough and it says you're going to make great money, you say great money, then it's not like you have a survival issue. You're not going to be struggling for survival. Do what you got to do. Be grateful for what you get and be open to opportunity. And the only way to be open to opportunity is to not be steeped in fear because then you're just going to be taking act. You're just going to be steeped in activity. You want to you want to be uh, you want to be an action taker, not an activity grinder. Two very different things. Activity is born out of fear. And you, you're probably fearfully, frantically trying to figure out this thing. Leave it alone, bro. Leave it alone, bro. Know that that's a goal. Right. Just know that it's a goal. Boy, I want I am grateful for the day when it comes that I earn $20,000 a month. I'm so grateful for that. That's going to be amazing. How is it going to happen? I don't know. But I'm not losing hope. I got a long life ahead of me. I think it's going to happen. I think it's going to come. And it'll come when it's supposed to come. He says also, um, I know where I want to be with my goals. Okay. Should I purely be focused on developing the skill sets needed to get there and less focused on getting the success now? Yes. That's your answer. You know your answer. Focus on being the strongest you given the circumstances you're in. Yes, develop your skill sets to be great at what you're doing right now. Not for something in the future, but where you're at right now. It's got to be grounded in reality, right? And being less focused on the success. Bro, success is a strange thing. And it's also, it's also an individual thing. What we call success is different if, if we're being honest with ourselves, right? What success to one man is, is hell to another man. The problem is that we get wrapped up in our imagination about when and what and how success is supposed to look, and it usually ends up being a troll goal, like you alluded to. It's a troll goal. So Ralph Waldo Emerson has a really great, great quote about success. I can't remember off the top of my head, but he says something to the effect of a man who plants a garden or, or, or makes friends laugh or has a, a, raises a healthy child. This is a successful man. A successful man is someone who is a good steward of his land, what God has given to you. That's what success is. Success is how are you being a steward, a caretaker for what God has given you to take good care of your wife, right? And to be a good husband and, 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 and to cultivate that marriage relationship and to have children. That's being successful, regardless of what the world says. Doing a good job at your job and being known for somebody who's a hard worker, who gets things done. That's being a successful man. Don't get that shiny object syndrome, bro. Leave that stuff to the insta hoes. You focus on where you at and you do the best that you can with what you have. And always, always, always maintain a sense of gratitude. Be grateful. Success is gratitude. People who have very little but are grateful for what they have are much more successful than someone who has a lot, but they're hankering for more. The man that wants more, that has, but he wants more, is a man that is not successful. But a man who has little and is content with and love is an appreciative of what he has, that's a successful man. That's a content man. I think we need to bring back, I know this is not popular, uh, um, you know, social media, get up and grind, um, vernacular 
But I think it's important for us to learn how to be content again. Content is not a bad word. I know that people have said that, oh, content, you know, when you're content, that's when you die or you're going back. So that's not true. That's not true. Content is appreciate appreciation. Content is being appreciative uh, of what you have and not, not hankering after something you don't. Paul has, okay, so I guess I can finish with this. Paul, Paul was uh, kind enough to pull up that Ralph Waldo Emerson quote. So I'm going to finish with it. What is success? To laugh often and much, to win the respect of intelligent people and the affection of children, to earn the appreciation of honest critics and endure the betrayal of false friends, to appreciate the beauty, to find the best in others, to leave the world a bit better, whether by a healthy child or a garden patch or a redeemed social condition, to know even one life has breathed easier because you have lived this is to have succeeded, Emerson. And it's the same for you, dude. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day, in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.